So once again, thank you to Emerged for uh, putting on these events this last uh, several months. And please check out Emerge if you're looking for new post-pandemic ways or just um, any uh, way to efficiently drive more targeted B2B um, qualified leads into your inbox without the sunk cost of marketing technology infrastructure on your end. In other words, lease versus own it and do it on performance. So check out Emerge, mention Decisions 2020, uh, and they'll, they'll generate a um, list of, of unique and qualified targets along with you before you even uh, consider signing a contract. So get with Cameron. And um, for those who are new to these, would love to have you uh, chat with me either pre or post session. You can either do that in the chat function below. Um, we may get to some of those questions on screen or we'll definitely follow up with them afterwards. And again, any questions related to Smarter B2B or the Emerge team, you can direct to Cameron at that email address right there for those who are screenshotting. Um, I'm Chris Snook. Again, for those who don't know me, I co-authored a book with Travis Wright a couple years ago called Digital Sense, and we've been going through the frameworks in that book as it relates to not only a customer-centric business model and operationalizing that in good times, but how more important than ever you can tie that with things like Lean Canvas or business model generation uh, frameworks and um, re-engineer your strategy in these uh, challenging and uncertain times to have a chance at um, not only sustaining, but maybe grabbing market share and or talent away as your competitors struggle to keep up. So that's the point of these. Um, and we have spent the last two weeks going over the different layers of the EMF um, framework. But today we're about execution. So for those skateboarding fans, you may recognize this uh, photo. It's Danny Way. And um, he's the one who did a mega ramp or invented the mega ramp, and which has been one of the top uh, draws to the X Games for the last decade plus. He also jumped the Great Wall of China on a skateboard. And, and so um, for many of you, you may feel like you're staring down. Now it's time to actually execute whatever plan you put together. You may feel like uh, Danny Way does right here, staring down at this abyss, knowing that you kind of have done all the work, but now um, uh, literally the wheels are hitting the road and, and the consequences uh, are real and the thrills may be real. So, um, and again, for those who are new and this is your first one, I encourage you to walk back. But essentially what we've got in this framework is, is a three-layer and two-loop um, way that you can customize a business model and then operationalize it across the silos of your enterprise um, so that all the teams are seeing the same common picture when you say things like customer experience or when you say uh, margin uh, optimization or, or whatever it is you have that all of your goals and all of your strategies align to those customer needs that you ultimately can fill in a way that is uh, to the best of your ability and then also hard to replace in the market with some other company or some other alternative. And so ultimately creating a defensive fortress around your core revenue streams. So we talked about um, how we innovate uh, on the vertical plane and we drive through the execution strategy and research layers, which we've called insights, vision, and success. And then also how today, what we're going to be doing is how we, once we've set that strategy at the vision layer and we begin to execute and optimize for reliability on that horizontal plane, um, what, what are the considerations there and, and what do we look for there? So again, last week we built out the framework for how you would go in populating your strategy. The week before we looked at forces and we looked at customer needs and we looked at competitive landscape to figure out where your disadvantages and your advantages may be and how you can then in the, in the um, talk last week, how you can calibrate all that stuff to scope within a 12 month period as we come out of reopening and back into some sense of whatever the new normal is going to be. Um, and so really, regardless of pandemics or COVID or any of this stuff, great strategy has always lived here, right? It is what is desirable, what is technologically possible um, within your uh, infrastructure or your uh, product suite? And then also, is it viable from a business standpoint? Can you get to market? Can you get somebody to pay for it? So in other words, what do you want to do? What are you able to do? And then is someone willing to pay you for those things? And so that centerpiece of that Venn diagram is always where great strategy lives. So hopefully last week uh, you got some tips and you were able to figure out what a great strategy is moving forward. And now we're going to talk about what it looks like and the things that you need to consider as you go implement that strategy today. So the three buckets that are part of the third layer or the success layer of the EMF are strategy, tactics, and data. So we already just talked about where great strategy is. So this is your 12 month strategy. We, we specifically talked to you about 
the 12 month strategy is literally a bridge to get you to your next one, three and five year plans because it's pretty impossible right now. Your last three to five year plans just got blown up over the last couple of months and it's too fresh, too raw and too uncertain right now to really feel confident putting too much energy around um, you know, your next three to five year plan. You can see on the other side of this narrative with some predictability, you can use maybe some of the research and some of the data that you've gathered to maybe understand from historical cycles and things like that, what's, uh, what's probable, not likely, but what's probable to be the environment that you're competing in. Um, and so there's nothing wrong with that, but I think we're all clear. We're not baking the three year cake uh, just yet anytime soon, but what we do need to know is can we look with some certainty out through the market and out through the business cycle at the next 12 months and figure out what we're going to do to survive, stabilize, and then ultimately where there might be some low hanging fruit that set us up uh, either with our cash position or um, a fresh new balance sheet or a, a more leaned and zero based budget to P&L to then um, be set up for a proper three to five year run um, and, and the time and, and, the, and the resources to be able to go attack that. So really, this is your 12-month strategy that you came up with last week. It's the post-pandemic and um, current reopening strategy and all the things that go with that from a talent standpoint, from a budgeting standpoint, from a, what's left from the old strategy that can still be milked throughout the end of the year to uh, pick up the losses from Q1 and maybe um, harvest whatever is left, right? And, and at the same time, what's the strategy really that moving forward is going to play into the macro cycles, into the, into the micro realities that uh, 40 million people uh, unemployed and, um, and, and, you know, all time high corporate debts and some of these other things that may or may not be impacting your supply chain unless you are B2B business uh, vertical. Um, how, how, do you, how do you get through that? So uh, you got that strategy. So you pretty much set there. Now it's about executing that with humanized tactics. Now more than ever, we talked about in digital sense humanizing um, the tactics. What does that mean? It means that um, you've done the empathy mapping work as it relates to how you push out this stuff. So whether you're at, whether you're talking about marketing activities, whether you're talking about ads, whether you're talking about how you do Zoom calls or webinars or whatever it is, what is the human element of that? Like on the other side of that screen, more than ever, you're now dealing with a human being for the last three months alone, those human beings have been either with a green screen behind them like I have um, doing some level of this, or most of us have seen inside our homes for the first time, whether that be our apartment building, whether that be our, our country home, wherever the heck you're living, because you're not in the office anymore, we've had dogs jumping on laps in the middle of Zoom calls. So, so we've been kind of forced to humanize our approach, even if we didn't realize it or choose it by design. But Either way, that's, that's important to kind of now operationalize into your going forward strategy because the, the post-traumatic impacts of the economy on a global scale being shut down, reopenings happening, but that level of both pent up frustration of we all miss hugging and seeing each other and getting out to restaurants and doing that, but we all still have that uncertainty and that fear and that politicizing of science and fact and election cycles, it's all weighing in on us. And so, you know, we're human beings, we're dealing with this stuff. And at the same time, now we're getting back to work because most of us now are back to work. Um, and, and so as you deploy your 12 month strategy, the tactics by how you deploy that must and have to be humanized. So the things that we talked about in um, the book and, it, and that really come back to implementing them now on the execution layer are, did you do the work to empathize with your customer set? You know who your customers are. Did you do the work with a small group of internal people um, to say, when this problem occurs, in other words, when I'm aware that I have a problem that our solution at our B2B business, that it fills, like we sell that solution, right? What do they think now? So what do they think before? That might be relevant because you may have not done that work before, but what do they think when that problem first occurs that it becomes aware that their boss or whoever saying, you've got to go find me a solution for this. What do they think? And then write that down in a grid, right? And, and then what do they feel? So when they think that, it makes them feel something. Because thoughts create feelings at some level. The minute we get emotionally involved with some kind of thought, we have an emotional reaction to the feeling. So I may think, oh my God, like I've got to now um, find a way to keep my leads coming in, um, but on a tenth of the budget that I thought I was going to have for 2020. So that's, so someone's saying, go get me SQLs. Go get me sales qualified leads at the same number because we need to hit the ground running and Q, the rest of Q2 through the end of the year and make our number 
and I need SQLs. Okay, great. So that's, that's the need. So when I, when I get that order, I think what? I think whatever I think. I might think, holy crap. I might think, of course he wants the same with less budget. Of course. I, I might think a number of things in my head. How's it making me feel? I might feel overwhelmed. I might feel excited because now I get to finally do a test run on something that I've been wanting to do for a while, whether it be something like an emerged or whatever, right? So maybe now I feel good because I get some autonomy to go experiment uh, because we've got nothing else that's going to work, right? Um, I may feel stressed. I may feel overwhelmed. So the thinking, the feeling, what do I say, right? So that's the empathy map model is what do I say to myself or to another person? I get on the phone and I say, to the, to the people that I'm potentially buying from, look, my B2B customer is X and I need SQLs and I need this. And so what I need from you is no BS, no high level retainers, no whatever I need performance based. I need zero based budgeting approach. I need, they're saying something right on the other end of it to you as their potential vendor. What is that that they're saying? What are the words that they use? Do they curse? Do they not curse? Do they, are, is the tonality there? Like literally almost mapping this out and visualizing this is what you've done through the empathy mapping process, hopefully from the first layer to the second layer. So after that, what you're going to do is then you're going to ask the final question is what do they actually do? So when we're talking about humanizing the tactics, um, this is where we're kind of keeping score, right? So now we're executing. Are our tactics human? Well, we'll know that because on the execution layer, we are collecting data. Now, the biggest problem with data in any company, no matter how technical or how non-technical they may be from a process standpoint, as far as collecting that data, is we've all been reading about ad nauseum big data for the last decade plus, and how big data and all this stuff is the future, and how AI and machine learning. But for the practical reality, most of us don't have any AI in our business right now in the B2B world, especially in the middle market. Most of us don't really have any real clarity into what all the data that we have collected can do for us. Some of us may have some processes, but we're certainly probably not optimized from an execution layer on having that data give us foresight or foreknowledge into the moves we need to make. So we need you to get there. So part of using this framework and part of defining this as part of the strategy or on the second layer is when we get to the success layer, are we measuring what we actually value? That's the question we want to ask as we start to execute. And, in the, and hopefully in the design layer, which is the one we talked about last week of that vision layer where we're designing the strategy, we've said, what is our data strategy? Are we measuring what we value or are we valuing just a bunch of stuff because we can measure it? And these are those KPIs that are meaningless, right? Are those metrics that uh, are vanity and that don't really tie back to any bottom line and that our quantitative C-level compatriots hate us for bringing up if we're on the marketing side because they're like, I don't care about vanity. I don't care about likes. I don't care about that. How many SQLs did it drive? How many, what did our closing percentage look like because we did that versus not doing it? How is it impacting the bottom line? So when we get to the success layer, what we've done and now what we're doing is we are literally executing. So the do part is we're executing. And as we execute with human centric tactics, we are learning, right? So the iteration happens. We are learning what, the data is telling us because we're now measuring only the things we value, not the things that can be measured. We are learning how to augment that plan. So we're not changing the strategy, but what we're doing is we're, we're changing and iterating and tightening the reliability of that current plan. So we're doing, we're learning, and we're planning, and we're doing, and we're learning, and we're planning. And that is spinning around as a tightened loop on the execution plan or on the success layer. And as we continue to iterate and learn, certain insights are occurring again, which then reactivate that vertical layer we talked about that drives all the way down to insights and then helps us augment our next 12 to three year strategy. So that's how this comes together. I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have online or offline or dive deeper in this. Um, again, if you want, send me an email. I'll send you a free Kindle version of Digital Sense. Happy to have you purchase it, obviously, uh, to go deeper on this in, in how you can execute it and the different um, uh, exercises and things you can do with a team that we wrote about at length in that book. But um, again, don't let money or anything be there uh, as, a, as an obstacle for you. Uh, send me an email um, or just message me on LinkedIn and, and I happily send you a, a complimentary copy of the Kindle version. Um, for you to dive into as part of my uh, gratitude for Emerge sponsoring 
these weekly executive briefings. Again, Chris Snook, if you are curious where some of these resources come from, you can get them here. And thanks for another great week. That was your 17-minute session today. See you next time. Hang in there. Take care.